Give me five minutes of your time and I'll share something about life, God and the Bible. Today is Good Friday. Jesus dies on the cross. Jesus is crucified because the Jerusalem temple leaders claim that Jesus is the king who is leading Israel to overthrow the Roman Empire. Although the Roman governor Pontius Pilate is skeptical of their accusations, he follows their demand and crucifies Jesus as the king of the Jews. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. June 19, uh, John 19, 19 to 20. Pilate acknowledges that Jesus comes from a little known village of Nazareth in Galilee. He also puts on that notice that Jesus claims to be the king of the Jews or the king of Israel. The sign Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, is written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek, the three main languages in first century Israel. Aramaic is the local language that is used in Jerusalem and Israel. When Jesus and his disciples travel all over Jerusalem and Galilee teaching and healing people, they use Aramaic. Latin? Latin is the language of the Roman Empire. This sign is in Latin to show that the order for ex the execution of Jesus comes from the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Jerusalem is under the rule of Rome. Before the Roman Empire, there is the Greek Empire. 300 years earlier, Alexander the Great conquers Jerusalem and Galilee. The entire Mediterranean area comes under Greek rule and culture. As a result, Greek becomes the main language of business and education in the Mediterranean region. That is why the New Testament is written in Greek. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, is written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek, the three main languages in the Mediterranean area. Remember the Magi? In the Christmas story, Matthew 2, 1 to 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born? King of the Jews. We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Matthew 2, 1 to 2. The Magi from the east referred to Jesus as the King of of the Jews. Now, the Roman governor Pilate refers to Jesus as the king of the Jews in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Both in Jesus' birth and in Jesus' death, there are two non-Jewish sets of people who refer to Jesus as the king of the Jews. This shows that the term the king of the Jews is a reference to Jesus as a king, but his kingship goes beyond merely the Jews or Israel. The Magi confirm this and have come to worship the King of the Jews. Pontius Pilate uses the three main languages of Jerusalem to name Jesus as the King of the Jews. Jesus is the King of both the Jews and the non-Jews. Jesus is the King of all of us. Jesus is the Son of God who dies for the sins of the world. Jesus is the King who dies for both the Jews and the non-Jews. The term son of God also carries the meaning of kingship. When the Jerusalem temple leaders accuse Jesus of the blasphemy of being the son of God, they are also saying that he claims to be the king of the Jews. So there is a little more meaning in Jesus being the son of God. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God gives up God's one and only Son for us. Jesus has come to save all the people of the world. It does not matter what language they speak, Aramaic, Latin, Greek, uh, uh, English, German, Chinese, whatever it is. It does not matter where they are born. It does not matter if they are rich or poor. The Son of God has come to save the world. 
and to forgive our sins, whoever we are. Amen.